Welcome to a new video in my home automation and Node Red channel and today I want to talk about something that I wanted to do for such a long time and I tried so many different ways and, and finally I managed to figure out how I can do it and that's about how you can generate charts and then save them in pictures so for example I can send it to telegram or maybe I can also include it in an email and as you can see here I have a couple of different charts that I have generated bar charts line charts I think I also have some donuts right at the end and today I want to talk about how you can do the same as well if you look at the flow here you can see that I'm using a new node which is called the chart image and it is actually called let me just find it's called the node-red-contrib-chart-image and you can install it from the palette manager and all it does it requires a special payload which has, which has to be in a, a specific format and then actually it's going to use chart.js in order to render that chart and then create an image output and here on the chart image node you can specify how many pixels wide or high that uh, chart image is going to be or the you know the jpeg is going to be and then on the output it outputs an image stream which because i'm using telegram i'm going to save it to a file but then you can just uh, put, it, put it into this change node for example which is set up to set up an email attachment and then if you send the output of this to an email node that will send you an email with the chart in the attachment using this example is going to require you to do a fair bit of uh, javascript coding because as i said the way this chart image works is that you need to provide a payload as you can see here with a different attributes that are required for the chart js uh, library and the node is just going to you know run that library and then capture the output in an image and all the documentation is actually in the chart.js documentation so here you can see how you can generate various uh, different chart types and if you go down here in the documentation you can see how you know you can do a line or a bar or a radar chart or a donut and a pie chart and actually just to make your life a little bit easier I come up with a couple of examples I haven't gone through all the types but I thought maybe the vertical bar the line chart and the donut are probably going to be the three that are going to get used the most but if you look at the code you most probably can figure out how you can do you know other ones that are supported by chart.js but I haven't done an example on that but before we start looking at the code I just want to spend a little bit of time about the node itself you can install it from the palette manager so this is the one you can see here unfortunately I ran into some issues when I tried to install this node and I don't know whether that was specific to my setup or you know you will be experiencing the same but actually uh, the one that worked for me is documented here in the node red discourse so if I'm um, I'm going to link to this uh, discussion in the video description and as you can see I got some help and I summarized what worked for me here in this uh, post so I had to install some dependencies first and once I have done that I also needed to manually install the canvas uh, through npm and one, once these two things were done I was able to install the chart image you know using the palette manager without any issues so that might be the solution for you as well let's look at the flow now so as you can see I have a couple of examples here so five different examples and they all start with an inject node which just creates an input it doesn't really matter what comes in the payload and next it goes into a function node and that function node is going to generate that special payload which is required for the chart image node on the top I just have some functions how I can generate the days of the week or the name of the months the real thing starts here when I'm creating this M object and here basically I'm setting up a skeleton object that is required for the chart image node uh, so it, as you can see the it has uh, various attributes for example the type which uh, defines what type of chart that we want to generate we have an option section as well where you can for example specify what would be the title of the chart if we want legend or not what would be the uh, background color of the chart area and because we are creating uh, you know static images I think it's also important that you also have data labels so I've taken this example how you can create data labels and of course you can you know make changes to this 
um, if you want the data labels to be displayed in a slightly different place or if you want the, the text to you know, format it in a slightly different way. And then finally, we also have a data section where we have labels. So those will be the labels on the X axis. And then you also have data sets, which again, an array. So this is how the chart supports multiple uh, data series. And well, in this example, I just have one. And as you can see, I have empty arrays in both the labels and the data, uh, because as I said, this is just a skeleton. I'm going to use this piece of code to fill it up. And in this case, I'm just filling it up with some random data. So as you can see, I'm just using some math random just to generate random data so I can see how it looks like. But basically what you need to do is you need to fill up the labels array and also you have to fill up this data array in the data set uh, attribute. So as you can see here, that's how the data goes in. So m.data.dataset0 data and then I just use the push method to put the value into the array. And then this is how I put the labels in. And then finally, you put the M into the payload and then return that payload. So that goes into the chart image and that generates the chart. Then I put the output into a file out node, which is going to save the image into a PNG file. And then in this function node, I create a telegram image. And that is quite standard as well. So as you can see, special payload, the chat ID is your telegram ID, a type is a photo, and then the content is the path for the PNG file that we just saved. And you can also add some caption. So if I generate the first data now, then we can see that I have received the chart image. So as you can see, it has one series and it's a vertical bar. And then you can see the various values on the top of the bars. And also you can see the X axis and the chart JS is going to determine if you have enough space to show all the series label or in this case, it's only going to show the series labels for every second data line. And it's also at 45 degrees, which I haven't specified, but that's probably comes from some defaults. And the one big difference between this chart image and the standard UI chart is that in the standard UI chart, when you are passing data through, it would know that it would take the current timestamp uh, as the x-axis value. But in here, because it's a general chart, it doesn't know what the x-axis is. So if you just pass a timestamp to it, then it's just going to display that number. So you have to do your formatting. So this is why I have, uh, you know, the days of the week here. So here I say that, okay, show me, I get the date from the, you know, from the D, uh, the date, and I just, you know, push it into this uh, array, which is going to return me the, the name, uh, name of the, the day, you know, it starts Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. And then next I put the date and I also put like, you know, first, second, third, TH, so that sort of stuff. So this is why it, my chart appears uh, like yeah, we have seen on the screen. So this is the first one. And of course you can go in here, you can change the title. And um, for example, if you want different color, you can change the color here as well. And of course you would feed in different values. The next example is if I have uh, also a vertical bar, but I have two data series. So let's see how that looks like. So that's how it, it looks like. And as you can see, it also has the title, it has two series and uh, these are not stacked. And you I also enable the labels here, sorry, the legend here. So we can see how the legend works. And here you can see that I've used a different label for the X axis. So instead of seeing the name of the day and the date, it's, uh, it, it just shows the date in day, month and year format. So let's see how that looks like in the JavaScript code. So the beginning is pretty much the same. As you can see, uh, the title is different. Here I just said the legend equals true. So I, I just enabled the legend, that was it. Um, nothing here on the data label. And as you can see here in the data, in the data the data set attribute, now I have two objects. So I have uh, one which is called the series one. The other one is called the series two. This is that's what get displayed in the legend. And that's the color for series one. This is the color for series two. Well, that's simple. Obviously the JavaScript code is a little bit more complicated because I'm generating two sets of data. But other than that, it's really simple. So th this is how I populate the first series and this is how I populate the second series. And very similarly, if you, have, if you want multiple series, then you just need to duplicate these objects, you know, 
pick a different label, pick a different color, and of course then you would need to also maintain the values. So as you can see, m.data.datasets, and then the index is the index of the series starting with zero, and dot data is where you need to put the put the actual data in. And of course for the labels, we don't have you know separate labels. The first data from both data sets will correspond to the first label. So as you can see, I'm just um, again generating a random uh, date. So I, I'm generating 10 data lines and I just say that, okay, you know, pick the dates from, you know, the, today minus 10 days all the way to today. And for each of these days, I'm actually, you know, using this piece of JavaScript code to get the month, the date and the year. And finally, I'm just putting it together as a string with separated by dots. So that's it. Let's look at the next one is the line chart. That is going to be also quite similar. Well, this is a simple line chart. You can see I only have a couple of data here, so it makes sense to include the data labels. But, you know, really simple, just a simple line chart and I have a, you know, title and I haven't really specified anything, but it's actually trying to connect these dots using a, um, like, a, I don't know whether it's a spline or, you know, just a curvy line, not with straight lines. I haven't really specified anything here. Maybe you can specify somewhere that you want straight lines. So the type is line, uh, the display, well, title is displayed. Legend is disabled and data labels is actually exactly the same as it was before. So I haven't really touched anything here. And the data set is also the same. So we have a series label, which doesn't get shown anywhere because we don't have the legend turned on. And then we have the same color. And I use this field false because if I set the field to true or just don't specify it by default, then it's going to color the the area in between the x axis and the, your legend. So we are going to see, sorry, not the legend, but the, your, your actual data. We are going to see how that looks like uh, later on. But populating the data to this line chart works exactly the same way how you would populate it uh, for the, uh, the vertical bar. So as you see the data, the data set, the label, so all this whole section is exactly the same for all chart types. The, the, what really differs is like obviously the, the type and, uh, and we are going to see that there are a few special ones for each of the type. For example, for a line chart, you can specify whether you want to fill or not. So let's see how it looks like if we have three data series. So I just uh, trigger this one and we look at my telegram and that's how it looks like. So as you can see, I have three series. I haven't enabled the legend here, so we are not seeing anything here, but you have a yellow line and a blue line and, and the red line. And now let's see how it looks like in a code. And let's see how it looks like in the JavaScript code. So the beginning is the same line type, the uh, title of the chart, legend is disabled, the data labels I haven't checked, touched from the previous one. And then in the data section, we have labels and data set. And then now in the data set, we have three objects. So we have the first, the second, and the third series. As you can see, the, the difference between the two is that obviously they have different colors. And for the first one, I said, I want to fill and I also specify the background color. And then for the other two, it is not filled. So this is why you see that for the yellow line, there is a yellow background all the way up to the yellow line. And then the red and the blue line just, well, they are just lines. So that, that, that's pretty much it. And again, uh, just like in the vertical bar example, I have three methods or I have I have three lines in the JavaScript code to fill in the first data set and then the second data set and the third data set. And of course, just like before, the labels are the same for each of them. And then finally, let's look at a donut or a pie example. So first, let's check how it looks like. And that's my donut. And as you can see, it has, again, some random colors. And I have like 12 colors. And then the, the labels are the name of the month. Well, just because I had that in the JavaScript code. And well, that's a donut chart. So let's see how it looks like in the JavaScript code. Uh, the donut and the pie chart are uh, technically are exactly the same, 
the only difference between the two that they also they both had a cutout percentage so that basically says how big the central circle is so if you take it all the way to zero then well basically the donuts go all the way into the center of the tri uh, center of the circle so it becomes a pie chart and here we are going to see that the data structure looks a slightly bit different but before we go to the data structure i have modified the data label section here and especially the formatter so as you can see the formatter still calls the function but now it has a value and a context variable and then what i could do here is i'm using this method to get the label for the data index and then the value so as you can see the it, you know for the donut it also shows you the data label and the data value as well because otherwise uh, you, you wouldn't know what the different colors are and when I look at the data section, it appears that this is a type of chart which only has one data series because the individual sections of the pie and the donut are the different you know, data elements or, well, the data itself. So I specified a background color and the border color and the border width. The reason I did that because I wanted the donuts to you know, physically separate from each other. So if you don't do that, well, then the sections would just you know touch each other and for me that was a slightly cleaner look but you can play around with these values and what i did in the javascript code i said okay i i'm just going to generate 12 uh, data and first of all i need to populate the data point itself so again i'm just inserting into into the m.data.dataset 0.data and i just push a you know random value to it but now in order to make these uh, individual sections a different color I also had to specify the background color also for the data set property so as you can see the background color is also an array because that's how you can specify the colors for each individual sections and I just said that okay I just want some random colors based on the HSL you know color wheel so it goes from you know red to yellow to blue and then green and all the way back to yellow that's how i got this very colorful one but you can play around with you know colors or if you have like fixed color or if you have fixed number of entries then you can just pre-populate the colors here in the uh, main object and finally i also had to provide the labels and in the labels i'm just using the ml array which is going to return me the uh, the name of the month so this is how this is why in the labels you are saying the name of the month and then the value so that's the label and the actual value so that's how the donut looks like and well as i said this is my simple telegram example and of course you have a telegram sender node at the end which sends out the telegram message and if you want to send any of these images in an email you can also use this change node so in this change node I'm creating an attachment object. The attachment co uh, dot content became, becomes the payload. So this is the binary content of the image. You can also specify a name to this. Uh, maybe this should be actually child.png, not JPEG. And then, the, uh, and then the subject of the email, the body of the email. And here you would put the email address where you want to send that email to. And then of course you put the output into an email node and that will send you an email. So this is how you can dynamically generate images and save them into an image file and you know maybe just store it send in an email send it in a telegram or other messaging service as always you're going to find the link to this flow and also the link to the various website that i talked about in the video description but that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video